I want to thank everyone who's here tonight with myself and Lauren. Today is May 20th, 2021. This is Kathleen Butler, and we're doing a SRT practitioners. It's called a clearing session. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more about that, even though we may not do what's conveyed as a technical, uh, a regular clearing session. This is an event that is posted on the Spiritual Response Association's YouTube. This is free to everyone. Lauren and I are volunteering our time to be here tonight and to share some ideas and concepts. Um, for those of you, just some information because summer months are approaching. If your favorite consultant, your favorite teacher isn't available to help you with clearing work or some questions, feel free to contact the SRA's consulting line. They do have people there on different ships and you can find a list of consultants and information about them at spiritualresponse.com. Now, if you're looking to find a teacher or to order products, you'll wanna go to spiritualresponse.org. The .org is the actual organization content and the .com is more about uh, the consulting line. So that is just telling you the difference between those. And I wanna welcome you again all here to the clearing session on Zoom, which again is organized by the SRA as a way, and the, of course the board of directors as a way to support our worldwide community. I know this time zone doesn't match everyone. So thank you also to those that find these on YouTube and listen to them. Although there will be moments when everyone is muted, we will have an opportunity for interactions and Lauren and I will tell you what that time is. And again, feel free to type questions in the chat box and we'll be getting back to those as well. We'll have an opportunity, as I mentioned, for that interaction, feel free to use that Zoom chat. And a couple of announcements that I gave uh, already, so no worries. If you're looking for books or charts, do contact the SRA office. The Rochelle is now in the office every morning um, from eight to noon maybe, um, but it's every morning, Monday through Friday. So it's not just one or two days a week. So she's able to do more processing with those orders. Today, I have the privilege of speaking to Lauren, who looks like she left. Just a moment. No? There you are. Okay, someone else is in the, the view, so I just thought I had to look for you. Okay, so I, I have the privilege today to speak with Lauren Briggs, who's been part of the SRA for many years. Um, she took uh, classes, oh gosh, quite a while ago, probably about 2005, uh, 2006. And so she's had an extensive and interesting bio that I want to share some of that with you. And so part of that is like many of you, Lauren knew from early in her childhood that she had some gifts for healing and connection to her spiritual self. And she believes everyone can reach their connection if they have the desire. Now, we all know we're connected to spirit, but we're not always aware. And so she had this awareness and knows that everyone can develop that awareness as well. She does, um, she does not connect with most spiritual practices or religions because she needs to be an active participant in her growth. She wants to be active in whatever that, that spiritual awareness is. She loves the human experience and our connection to the earth and to our bodies. Day-to-day -day life for her is a spiritual experience. She is a whole person and she's truly um, spiritual. She needs to access all of her emotions and all of her being. She um, began uh, being spiritual to Lauren is not about being a certain way all the time. It's being present at the time. It's sometimes that feels good and sometimes not so good, but she's aware that that's okay. She feels divinely guided and she, um, she's never really enjoyed her life so much 
really gratitude, really feeling blessed. Lauren's a certified SRT consultant. She is not a certified teacher. And I wanted to mention that because if you have questions about teaching or a chart or explaining a concept on a chart, uh, that um, would be for an SRT teacher, but she has a lot to share with us tonight. So she is a certified consultant and a certified Dishka giver. That's a title given to one who has done the appropriate courses through the Oneness University trainers. And Lauren, could you type in the chat box, the, e, the um, website for the one, onenessuniversity.org? That would be great for everyone to have there. She can offer a blessing from the founders of the Oneness University in India. And this is a blessing that's used to quiet the mind and help the individual reach states of inner peace and knowingness of herself. And she'll be um, sharing some of that with us. Lauren's original education was in anthropology, um, anthro, anthropology, but anthropological nutrition. <laughs> anthropological, <laughs> anthropological nutrition. There you go. Thank our you. ancestral, our ancestral diets. There you go. Uh, I've taken anthropology myself. Okay. She has become known as the happy belly chef. And she knows the basic principles of the, we of the Weston A. Price Foundation to prepare meals to heal the gut and to produce healthier digestion. Lauren still teaches with the Rogue Valley Farm to School program founded in Southern Oregon University, which is Sustainability Center in Southern Oregon. Lauren came to know about SRT in 2002 where she personally had done many spiritual practices and received benefit from every individual practice. Um, but her life changed dramatically after her first SRT session. She was determined at the time to learn more about the system and to share it with the world wherever uh, she could uniquely do that. And she loves engaging in her uh, yoga practice. And I'm proud to say that Lauren is a former student of mine Yes, that is uh, kind of what got her interested in SRT as well. She's taken basic and advanced class from me. And then of course, the teacher just offers the class and gives you some guidance, but you're in charge of your, what are you gonna do with that? So Lauren uh, embraced that a lot. So before we begin our, our actual topic, I'm going to open with, we're going to open with a meditation and then talk a little bit more about Lauren's spiritual endeavors. Um, so did you want to begin your uh, opening yeah. meditation, Lauren? And I'm going to make sure everyone is muted except for you. And that looks to be true. Okay. Let's start with a very grounding meditation. So uh, this meditation can be used at any time. Anytime you're feeling stressed or you know, you're, you're feeling those old feelings come up, this is where you go. This meditation actually doesn't belong to me. It, it, it was developed by my teacher, Prithaji. And she's, along with being a monk at the Oneness University, she is also a, uh, got a PhD in neurobiology. So the meditations that she creates, you will be an active part in moving energy from certain parts of your body. Uh oh, I'm frozen. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, you, you're uh, fine. Okay. Yeah, uh, you will be a part of this meditation where you're going to move your focus into certain areas of the brain. And this is how we start to move energy away from our amygdala, which is our, uh, now we call it fight, flight, or freeze. Some people freeze when they're frightened, some people run, and some people fight. But we move the focus of our attention away from that and into what's called the Brahmagalpa, which is uh, the middle of the brain. It's the place, the seat of consciousness that actually is connected to your higher self. Um, I find it interesting that most biologists say we only use like one tenth of our brain. It's kind of a duh for me that the other part is for our connection. But you know, that's never quite said. So everyone get comfortable. Make sure you're, if you're in lotus position and you're sitting on the floor, you know, make sure you're on a mat. If you're sitting, please don't cross your legs, put your feet flat on the floor. 
And we're going to start with just a little music. Close your eyes. Whenever you feel distracted, whenever you're preoccupied with the past or the future, whenever you want to return to a calm state, this, this is where you go. Right now, make sure your spine is erect. Let's do three conscious breaths for three cycles. Let your exhalation be just a little longer than your inhalation. And I like to think of the body as kind of a barrel. So when I ask you to breathe deeply, I want you to feel breath go. Expand out the sides, feel it in your back, feel it in your chest, allow the body to just fill totally, and then release. The active part should be more the release and the exhalation and allow the inhalation to be gentle. Now recognize the exact emotion that is arising in you now. Is it irritation? Anxiety, confusion, joy, gratitude, love, just recognize what it is. Now observe the direction of the movement of the thinking. Are you entangled in the past? Or are you projecting a future? Or are you very present? Is what you're feeling inside very present with the now? Now move your attention to your eyebrow center. Visualize or feel a tiny flame right there at your eyebrow center. And slowly move it to the center of the brain. And keep your focus on the center of your brain as if that flame was just floating in and illuminating the center of that brain. Feel your body relax. Feel your connection be strong. And whenever you're ready, put a smile on your face and then open your eyes. <laughs> So well, thank you, everyone. That was beautiful. Thank you, Lauren. That was very relaxing <laughs> and interesting to see what what came up when you asked us to ask questions. You know, I'm glad that you said that, Kathleen, because um, it doesn't really matter what comes up. If you really feel frustrated or you're feeling agitated, uh, if you move that flame to the center of the brain, your divine will take care of it. Almost like a little right. blip in time and you just, you're allowed. It's like your, your gift. So um, I would like to start. And if anyone loses, like if I, they lose my hearing or whatever, I'll keep watching. Just let me know. 
So I'd like to start that uh, with this uh, um, idea that, you know, clearing work has been a life changer for me. It's just changed everything about the way I feel about life and myself. But then I'm just, I started noticing years ago that we'd come to the end of clearing and many people didn't have great concepts of like their creative power. It was oftentimes put into my hands and I wanted to give the ball back. So the first topic I'd like to talk about today is that many clients at the end will talk about the outside world or what they're witnessing um, as real. Like by the time it reaches density or where we can visually see, it's really something of the past. It takes a lot of energy in, to take chaos and to create. So therefore, asking in the moment for what you want is really essential to creating something new. So many people will say, well, I have to do this because that's the way life is. Uh, you know, and that concept for me doesn't even hold water anymore. It's the way someone created. It's the way someone viewed it. It's the way someone wanted to manipulate you or a family member. But it really isn't your reality. So Driving that idea a little bit further always helps them after clearing work because that's one of the things that they struggle with. Well, this is the way it was in my family. This is the way it's always been. This is the way I was told I had to be. So that's when, when I actually in, help them to see that by the time it's reached density, it's actually a past event. When we open our eyes, it, we're actually dragging the past with us, which is not a bad thing. It's just that's not, that's, that, that, that's just it. It's past. We get to create what we want. So when in truth, uh, someone else's creation might not be a truthful creation for me. Um, and I'm not necessarily talking about logistics. Like I worked in the medical field a long time. So logistically, maybe something takes this much time or you have to do this or that. But I'm talking about how you want to be treated what you want, what, how do you want this to look? How do you want to be handled? What, what, is, how do you want to be cared for? Those are the things people can start feeling into. I, I have a great story about, you know, when the teenagers would start at high school, my, my son had a group of friends and they'd come and say, oh no, I got Mr. So-and-so for history. And I heard he's just horrible and he gives so much homework and it's just, you know, and I would say, you know, maybe for some people that's true, but why don't you have your own experience? Why don't you ask for what you want? Why don't you see what, what you could create? So I had this group of boys who kind of thought this was goofy, but it worked. And they come back and say, it worked. I really like him. He's actually a really nice guy. So that's one of the first things I wanted to talk about. That is an issue that a lot of people have trouble with. And what I will often say is experiment. Don't take my word for it. See for yourself like watch something and then ask for something you want. Um, ask for it to be different. Ask for the type of feeling you wanna have or how you wanna be embraced. So this leads into the second question that a lot of times comes up. So if you ask a client, and I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself. If you're my client and I would say to you, where does your true intelligence live? Where do your smarts live? Where do you think they live? I always feel like they're in my gut and around my belly button, even not necessarily my brain. I think that's where your connections to the intelligence is, but I don't think your intelligence lives there. Uh huh. Yeah, unmute you know. yourself. You can. Well, Landa, why don't you unmute yourself if you want? Hi. I I think that the intelligence actually is all around us we're like either, and, and we're surrounded with it. And then we have perception of it, of it in our belly. And then we, like you're saying, we're always creating mm -hmm. uh, as we are moving through. And then whatever was, is showing up for us around us, it's already, like you said, it's already something created from the past. And I love your idea that what you said to your sons, because that's what I used to say to my sons when they were, they would come home and they say, oh, my mom, mom, I got this teacher and I say you know what just don't take other people's information and make it your own just experiment and look and see what you get and it's it, it worked for for them as well so I just wanted to to 
to tell you, Lauren, that we did as that as well. And it was very powerful for my sons. Yeah, that's a great experience. And that's a great experience to have as a kid, isn't it? I mean, like yeah. to really have that early on to, to know that you're a creator. Um, so I would say everyone is right in that. Kathleen is right as far as all of her sensors. She's got sensors in her belly. She's got sensors. You've got sensors in your mind, but you're swimming in it. You're swimming in intelligence. Anything in your mind is more skill-based. So I couldn't live without my mind because I wouldn't know how to drive my car or I wouldn't know how to tie my shoes, which would be really terrible. But those are skills. And oftentimes our skills are kind of um, actualized within this lifetime. But true intelligence, you're swimming in it. It's everywhere. And that's why a lot of so-called moral codes, while maybe in other years past when we you know, were eating each other or whatever it was, we needed them. But right now, what we really need is in the moment intelligence. So I'll give you an example that, you know, comes up all the time. Someone say, well, I, you know, I'm very religious. I don't believe in that. You should never hit anybody. I say, okay, well, let's go out in the street and you stand there. If I see a car coming, should I should not hit you to get you out of the way? I should let the car hit you and you die. Is that correct? Is that what you're telling me? Oh, no, no. I mean, that's okay. But you, you know, you should never do this. I'm like, okay. And we go down this list by the time we get to four, four or five we're usually like, okay, you know, our true connection, our true morality, our true connection to other people and the universe is actually in that present moment. And no one can really tell us what we can do unless we are present. And I will tell you that I have made a lot of decisions poorly in my life because I wasn't present because I wasn't accessing what was around me. I was coming from the past. I was not making right spiritual action. I was making reactive action, right? From my pain, from my past, from my wanting to protect myself instead of being very present with what's here. So you are swimming in it. And believe me, the mind is very talented because it has to take all of this information and has to transpose it and do all this great stuff, but it is skill-based garbage in, garbage out, great stuff in, great stuff out. Um, and oftentimes when we go to the mind, you know, I find a lot of anxiety in people is the fact that they have counted on the mind for that intelligence. And then at one point it doesn't come through. And that's a really scary thing. It's like, well, I was told this and this person said this, and this is what's supposed to happen. And, and that's a really scary thing to be. And so it creates this kind of mounting of, um, well, I just really call it stray anxiety that comes out of that type of thing. Um, so, you know, I have a, I have a great story about, so I wanna just kind of like, um, I wanna say that when, when we are swimming in that intelligence, we really do tap into that eternal flow. And it's sometimes, I'll get a message of something to do and my mind will say, that doesn't seem quite right. That doesn't fit. And yet if I really dive deeper and I can quiet my mind, I can feel the calm behind it. And I know that I just haven't been there before. It's not that it doesn't fit. It's that I have not experienced it in my mind, right? And that's why as children grow, I mean, you know, they have a bank of information, but as we grow, as we get older, we have more skills, more talent, more to pull from. But that doesn't always work. So what I will say, and I remember Robert saying this a couple of times, messages from the high self are never scary. They might be uncomfortable, but they don't scare you. Uh, fear is one that will scare you. Fear comes from the mind. And actually, in a lot of uh, the ashrams in India, they will say fear is nothing. There is nothing in the mind but fear. Because fear is, it is part of the physical body. It's there to keep you alive. And so that's its job, is to say, don't walk out in front of the bus. Don't get hit by the bus. Don't, don't eat that plant that's poison. That is its job. 
Our problem in this society is that we've taken something that's meant for the physical being and we've put it into an emotional content, right? So now I use this physical thing. That would be like using a screwdriver to put my makeup on. You know, that just doesn't work. So it's like I can't take that physical component of myself and then apply it to my emotional and spiritual bodies. So I want you to, one of the things is to get really clear on those differences and to not disrespect any of them. I am totally in love with the fear of my body because it has kept me alive. It's kept me from poisoning myself. It's kept me from jumping in the pool at the wrong time. It has kept my body very safe. So why should we put it down? But I also know when it's invading my emotional and spiritual life. And then it's like, nope, the two-year-old can't have the keys to the car. That's not okay. Before we move on, because I want I wanted to make sure we get a really cool meditation in to uh, get us clearer about how to open up and ask for grace. I want to share a story um, of a client I had uh, years ago. So when my son was younger, we had a beautiful woman who was our assistant aide. Um, and she had a daughter who was just a lovely girl, went through grammar school a couple of years ahead of my son. And then she entered high school and it was her freshman year and she entered one class and she went back to her mom and she said, I'm not going back to school. I'm never going back to school. And I knew the mom because I would see her in the morning and I noticed her getting very, very depressed. And so I went up to her and I said, is what's going on? Is there anything I can do? And she said, my daughter is now talking about suicide. She's talking about wanting to leave because she's so scared. And I said, what happened? She said, nothing happened, nothing. She wasn't, cause I kept asking her, did they hurt you? Did they hit you? Did they, and she's like, nothing. I just won't go in that classroom. So I said, bring her to my house on the weekend. So, you know, this, uh, a young mom was really having financially hard times. So I said, just bring her. We'll just do a little celebration for her. So I set up a room like a, like a, I lit candles, almost like a, a, a like a spiritual sanctuary, like a room. And, and we took her in there and I, I don't even think she looked up at me when she came in the door, beautiful girl. So I sat down and I explained to her what I did. And I said, you know, this, it doesn't make sense what's going on, does it? So maybe it didn't happen this time. Maybe it happened somewhere else at another time. And maybe your body's just remembering. So we did, we did clearing work. And three of the girls in that classroom had killed her in a past life. And as soon as she walked in that room, she knew she was dead meat. And um, they were never mean to her. They were never, you know. So we did the clearing work. And, um, and then we did this really cool thing where we celebrated her as a goddess. So we made her a little crown out of flowers and uh, we put a cape on her back and, and, you know, we, we told her that that lifetime was done and that um, whatever payback, you know, that needed to happen is all cleared up in the universe that, you know, she's perfectly fine. And one of the girls in that class became her best friend for the next four years. One of the girls that had hurt her. And it was, it was such a telling experience for me of, um, you know, sometimes sessions can be so difficult and you can go on and on and an issue so deep. And then sometimes it's just, it's, it's just that it's just beautiful. Um, so is there any, um, is there any question anyone would like to ask or add anything about uh, their ideas of, of, of kind of the creative power or the, the topic that we're talking about, especially where our intelligence lives. Any comments, feel free to put them in the chat box if you're, uh, with, oh, someone raised their hand. Uh, I just see raised hand. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> no raised hand. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. No, wait. Uh, no. Something? Okay, nothing. So we're gonna do something that has been incredibly powerful for me. Oh, wait a second. Um, yes. Um, I think Shoba, Shoba has a yeah. raised. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I have one question. How, like, what kind of question did you ask to get to the point where you figured out that four of the girls would have killed in past lives? Well, I'll, I can let Kathleen answer that. That's basic clearing work. 
So, you know, chart one, what's the problem? Why is this happening? Um, in, you know, and then you're led, I, I can't, I don't think I can say. Well, that. well, you know, she, you, you, so she's just explaining a traditional SRT. Okay. Session. And so as you'll notice, the word suicide is on chart 6A. Okay. Um, and if there's been emotional or mental harm in a past life, the question that you, most of you have been taught is, did it lead to early death or suicide? Suicide means you took your own life. Early death means, you know, someone helped you there. So uh, usually an execution type thing. But when you get suicide, something to think about is it's not always physical. Although in this case, she found that it was physical. So Robert would say, if you get suicide on 6A, ask if it's mental, emotional, or physical. Because if it's just the one person as the cast and it's about their energies on 6A, then you might find that they did emotional suicide. It wasn't necessarily physical, although it could be any of the above. Oh, if that helps. Yeah. Thank you, Lauren. Go ahead. Yeah, and abdication charts came up a lot, you know, abdication oh, yeah. power. Yeah. So, um, but that was a great question. And um, it, it was essential for me to do the clearing work first because I find without the clearing work, I'm just picking at straws. I'm just like trying to you know, figure things out again with my mind that doesn't have all that information. And past lives for me, I'm very lucky that they open as small movies. So sometimes I can actually see the beginnings of something, what goes on, where it ends. Um, I've made an agreement with my high self, no blood, no guts, no gore. That's my three things I say. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> I've seen it all. I'll get it. <laughs> um, so Moving on in my spiritual journey, I really wanted to know, I wanted to have a guide for people because saying you're swimming in this intelligence doesn't mean anything if you don't know how to access it. It's like having a phone, like having the best smartphone, but no network. Who cares? Who cares what your phone is? So um, I was lucky enough to... Uh, through my Diksha uh, service, the, the younger monks, Prithaji and Krishnaji, started programs for us as we would send questions into them. How do you connect? What do you do? What is the, what is the way that you bring about your desires? And none of this is religious in any way. Um, Akam is a powerhouse that was built in India in the southern part, if any of you know about it, many people know about it. It's actually built as a shetra, which means that there are spires that bring in the universal energies into the center. So when you enter, your whole body aligns. Um, it's made for all of humanity. There is not one person that's left out, not one religion. Uh, the chant that we're going to do in, in this meditation we're going to do is actually an ancient vibrational chant. It doesn't mean anything in any certain language. The words are hum sa so hum akam. I'm gonna do it with you. And so you don't need to remember that. But hum sa means I am one with the universal intelligence. The universal intelligence cannot be separate from me. It does not exist without me. So hum sa. So hum means the universal intelligence is one with me, right? It cannot be without me. It's almost like I'm a cell in the body of God. And if I'm missing, things are not complete. So universal intelligence needs me as much as I need universal intelligence. And then Akam, which is a weird word, uh, means the one. There's only one. There's only one intelligence that is flowing the whole time and moving everything. So in that, so because of a lot of requests of many, many people, they created a prayer that will open you to grace, connect to the heart, make your connection, allow you to create, allow you to surrender, and then allow you to move into deep gratitude. It's about 10 minutes. And anytime I really need something, that's where I go. And it is an amazing creative power. And I'll tell you one of the coolest things. So I'm not going to say the client, but I have a client who is a restaurateur in, uh, in New York. And she lost her whole business, millions of dollars, million dollar business. 
um, over COVID. So we started the, doing the prayer together. She'd call at night, we'd start doing the prayer together. Um, she got a million dollar grant the other day to replace the money. Um, she's got a space that opened up for her. She's got a new kitchen that was provided by someone who didn't want to do their business anymore. And she said, I cannot believe that everything in my vision came exactly the way I wanted. So you're always loved. You're always held like this is this is your antenna. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do it together. And I'm going to speak through it. I'm going to do the chanting. And then what I will tell you is, I didn't, I'm so sorry, I didn't get a chance to do it, but I'm going to put my website on there. So on my website, Serene Mind is there, free download. If you go to my website and you go into the SRT section, pop in there, a new window opens. And on the right side above my PayPal or below it, I can't read remember which now but there are four meditations the prayer is not there yet but it's going to be there this weekend because that's on the top of my to-do list <laughs> well and i can type it in here srt and more right yeah srt and more.com so you can download any one of those for free they're all mp3s you can download there's a gratitude there's a serene mind um there's a couple more and you'll hear preza j's voice on there she's much nicer to listen to than I am. She's a very sweet little monk. <laughs> Spends all her time in the temple. So she isn't driven crazy by the outside world. <laughs> all right. So let's do this. I'm, you'll hear times when I'll be talking and then I'm gonna raise the music so that you can get into your space. Please um, find yourself either sitting on a mat or, and if you're gonna be cross-legged, you gotta be on the floor. If you're sitting in your chair, please put your feet flat on the floor. Okay, peeps, here we go. You can do this prayer for yourself or for another. Make sure your spine is erect. Feel your body breathe. And feel the breath move in and out. That's your connection. Now three deep and slow breaths the exhale just a little bit longer than your inhale. Now open your arms wide above the chest level. Lift your head to the heavens. Ask the divine, please open my soul to grace. I'm here. Now gently bend your head down as if you're looking into your own heart. Touch your heart with your palms. Now we're gonna chant the Akam Mantra seven times. As you chant this, this will open you to a state of oneness with the divine. 
it will actually draw the power of Akam in that very moment to fulfill your prayer. Hum sa so hum ekam. 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 Feel the divine as your indweller, the love of your life. Talk to the divine with deep feeling, like you talk to a parent or a friend or a child or your beloved. Ask the divine to fulfill your heart's desire. Now lift your chin up, hold your head straight forward. At this stage, imagine and feel as if your prayers already answered. It involve every sense as if it's already become a reality. Feel it as vividly as possible. You're the smell, the sight, the feeling, how happy you are. Feel the joy. And so it is. Now I'd like you to surrender to your divine. If you're on the floor, bend your body and a spirit of surrender. If you're in a chair, just touch the base of the chair. Let your head bow to your divine. Tell your divine who's in your heart that you're handing over all your cares with total trust in the knowledge that you are loved and that the divine is present in you. Now 
Now you can rise to a straight back whenever you're comfortable. Put your hands in prayer position at the heart in Namaskara Mudra. Think of all of the blessings you have received, all the times you were protected, all the times that life went exactly the way you needed it to go. Thank the divine from the bottom of your heart for all of the blessings that you have received and include this one. Whenever you're ready, you can come back to the room. That's one of the most powerful things I have ever done in my life. And you can do it for any, any type of, uh, any type of need that you have, emotional, spiritual, physical, money, ask for money and partners and love and vacations. And I do it for everything. <laughs> and you know, I would like to end this with a, a little tidbit that, um, and, and you can tell me if I'm crossing lines at all, Kathleen, just stop me in the middle. But I remember being in a class with Robert one time and time and time again, when chart 6B would come up, you know, like in a session, I remember he would stop and he would say, you are totally free to make any choice you want. God is not loving someone over another. Requests are being answered. So if you don't ask, you don't get. Ask for anything and everything you want. So the last thing I will say about the prayer is that one of the most important things it does for me is put me in a state of um, what I would say release. So there is a difference in the world between a challenge and a suffering. Everybody faces challenges. They're all around us. Even put a seed in the ground, it has got to work its way through the soil. It has got to fight its way up. It's got to get water and sun. Everything on this earth is a challenge. Suffering is the, the mind agitation about the challenge. Every time a challenge is, is, is put on this earth, we live in duality. The answer is there. It's in, it's, it's in the knowledge. But we go into our suffering. So what I will say is that we have in this it probably as much in the spiritual world as the religious world, and I'm just speaking from my own um, experiences. You know, we have kind of bowed and honored suffering. Look at what I've been through. Look at my suffering. Look at you know. But the same way that that suffering disconnects us from people, like when I'm in a bad mood, no one wants to be with me. <laughs> when I'm self-involved or raging, no one wants to be near me, no doubt. So the same way that that suffering separates us from people, it also separates us from our connection. It gives the wrong messages. So I'm not saying that we always have to be happy. I'm not running around with lollipops all the time. But what I'm saying is, you know, if I'm digging myself in deep to stop and to recognize that this is not getting me what I want. Um, and so there's also a difference between, you know, being with being with what's there in the outer world, like saying to someone, you can't treat me that way. That That's not right to me. And then what happens inside of me? Do, am I complete? Do I feel okay? Or do I go, or do I spend the day? It shouldn't have been that way. They shouldn't have done that. Oh my God, life is so horrible to me. And why does that person, that's the suffering, not the event. That's the suffering. So we disconnect from the solution, right? We're involved in the mind. We evolutionary wise, sadly to say, cannot do this and this at the same time right now. Your mind is either running and you're disconnected or you're connected from the heart. So um, that's the last thing I will say is I have stopped every form of honoring suffering. 
I'm not saying not honoring challenge. People have been through challenges in their life, and that's a that's a beautiful thing. But the rem the rumination of their suffering, or like I used to tell a story about my childhood over and over. Oh, the things I went through. You know what? Doesn't really matter. It's just a story of suffering that I don't really care about anymore. I actually feel like a totally different person who's lived a different life. Um, so with that, I will close and I will say if there's any questions. Um, yes, there are. So <laughs> let me help you out there. Okay. We want you to write down in the oh. chat box what those words are. I was going to do that at the beginning and I forgot to ask you. So thank you for doing that. And then the rest are just thanking you for the meditations. They were oh. quite beautiful. Yeah, so Hamsa, I should get the exact for you guys. Hold on. Okay, because I was just going to do it phonetic. Yeah, that's that's um, that's kind of phonetics, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do the exact as they do in India. Okay, then go ahead and type that in. So it's hamsa, and that means I. <laughs> that mens <laughs> means that I am one with the. I'm gonna put U I, which means universal intelligence. Okay, so everyone, you can see that she wrote that in the humsa soham ekam. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the meanings are coming up here. So literally when you're looking down in your heart, there's actually a vibration that's happening. All the cells are starting to vibrate. Have you ever uh, um, seen that book like The Messages in Water where you talk to the water? Okay, you're mostly water. So as you're saying, hum sa so hum ekam, and you're looking down into your heart, into your antaryama, the main indweller, your cells literally start to vibrate as I am the universal intelligence. Come in now. Like be me and I am you. Almost like disappear into you and you disappear into me. And then at the end, when we say ekam, that just means I want to be one with that. So it's a really simple, it's very vibrational. Um, and I even do that sometimes with my hand on, on water, you know, I'll do the chant on water because it's so, it's so important. Yes. And number seven is important. So you'll see it come up on YouTube. If you just type in, uh, you, you'll find it on YouTube everywhere. If you just type in ache and prayer, um, you'll find it seven times, 11 times, 21 times, 108 times. So Robert would also say the number seven means spiritual completion in the physical. Mm. So okay. I love that. Now we're coming to the end of our presentation. So I have, um, we can take a couple of extra minutes if there's anyone else who has questions or information. I also wanted to just take a moment to say with the spirit in the book, spiritual healing, you'll find a healing symbol or pattern for the beloved that Robert has in the expanded edition, which I found interesting to mm -hmm. find it there. And as Lauren mentioned, his one of his favorite things is was to say, ask that you can receive because spirit kept telling him people aren't asking enough. They're not asking enough. So uh, just keep in mind, you can ask, you don't have to sit and, 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 and suffer. Exactly. So you can ask for anything, ask for everything, play, use it as a game at first. I mean, I don't mean to be rude about it, but you know, get yourself used to that. Um, we're either free or we're not. I remember Robert saying one time, you can't be a little pregnant. You either are, or you aren't. Yeah. Are you free or are you not free? You know? Why does God like my neighbor more than me? He doesn't. <laughs> you just might be better at asking. <laughs> so, or not, yes, because remember, it's not what happens to us. It's the energy we put on it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. I'll give you, uh, looks like what's coming in is just thank you. So thank you, everyone. It has been a joy to do this presentation. Glad Lauren could um, join us tonight and glad that all of you were able to come. 
Thank you for coming. If you didn't come, we wouldn't have anything to do. So, you know, <laughs> you guys make it happen. Um, <laughs> That's the old saying, there is no you without me. There is no me without you. That's right. So, um, and again, thank you, to, thank you to everyone who kept their cameras on. It's so nice. I mean, I'm yeah. not putting down anyone else, but thank you. It's nice to look in people's eyes. And I want to thank Kathleen. She's been so great about back and forth, you know, setting this up and helping me design it. And um, she's just the best. I love <laughs> Kathleen. Thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed this myself. <laughs> And, and we know that some people do need to have their camera off. So that's all right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. It's really all right, because I do that a lot. So I'm not putting it. I just thank you to the people who I can see your eyes. It, it, it helps me when I get nervous to just look at smiley faces. So yeah. So thank you all again. Uh, I'm going to discontinue the recording here. Just a moment.